Team 8680 Kraken Opinion. Welcome to Kraken Opinions, where we analyze everything robotics and provide tips and tricks for your FTC needs. Today, we'll be cracking the code to a higher scoring autonomous program. We were fortunate enough to be one of the highest scoring autonomous teams in the 2017 First World Championship, scoring 18 out of 18 particles and 16 out of 18 beacons in our nine matches. The two missed were because our robot was hit by an opposing robot before claiming the second beacon. However, the program is not the only contributor to a good autonomous routine. A key cause of autonomous inconsistency was the wheel slipping. If the wheel slipped, the encoders would misread the robot's position, leading to incorrect positioning. There were several causes to this slipping. One of them was improper wheels. Without correct wheels, the robot might as well be driving on banana wheels. If you didn't know already, there are many different types of wheels, some of which are shown here. The nylon wheel provides the least traction, but are more durable, whereas the foam wheels provide the most grip, but are less durable. Our robot used these blue stealth wheels, which is an acceptable balance between traction and durability for both the autonomous and Telio. The wheels also constantly collected dirt from the field, so we cleaned them with alcohol wipes before every match. The clean wheels further improved our autonomous consistency. There was another problem that we found and fixed in our robot, polar moment of inertia. Polar moment of inertia is the integral of r squared dm, where r is the distance of a specific point from the axis of rotation and m is its mass. It measures inertial resistance to turning. For example, when the majority of the mass is far away from the center of rotation, it is much harder to turn than if the mass is closer. This is why figure skaters pull their arms in while spinning, in order to spin faster. If the polar moment of inertia is too high, the robot is also more likely to slip while turning, causing inaccuracy in the encoders and potentially throwing off the autonomous routine. In our regional robot, there was a lot of mass at the edges of the robot, increasing the moment of inertia and making the robot hard to turn. There was enough, so much unnecessary map on the border of our regional robot that it would slip nearly every time that we tried to drive it. Eventually, we realized this and tried to rectify it. We removed all the excess metal and replaced it with a plastic shell, saving a lot of mass and increasing our autonomous score. Another key problem was the center of gravity's location. First, it was too high at 9.2 inches or 23.4 centimeters off the ground. This caused the robot to be more likely to tip as most of the mass was above 9 inches or 22.9 centimeters. It was also too far forward. Even though the center of gravity is not the only contributor to moments of inertia, its placement forward of the axis of rotation does hurt it. These flaws caused the wheels to slip and the robot to tip backwards, resulting in inconsistent performance. However, for the state competition, we improved our robot drastically, and the new robot had a lower moment of inertia and lower center of gravity, lowered to 6.5 inches or 16.5 centimeters off the ground. The center of gravity was also closer to the center of rotation. All this combines to make a more stable, agile robot that is more consistent in the autonomous. Next, we used something called the variable speed task execution. This lets us accomplish tasks with both high speed and high accuracy by splitting them up into two parts. The robot uses a combination of encoders and sensors to complete a task with maximum efficiency. First, the robot uses its motor encoders to quickly complete almost all of the tasks. Then, the robot compensates for any inaccuracies from the encoders by using a more accurate sensor to slowly complete the remaining small fraction of the task. The sensor lets the robot finish the task, however, it only needs to be slow briefly, so the action is completed both quickly and accurately. While it might not be as accurate as using only sensors, it is drastically faster. We use this to line up for the beacons where both time and accuracy are critical. In our autonomous runs, we notice that the motors would run at different speeds depending on battery power. This is especially affected the flywheels because they would shoot inconsistently, so we measured the voltage applied to the flywheel and the height that resulted from that certain voltage. We figured out the optimal fraction of full power to apply to the motors for various battery levels, made a scatter plot, and then used free curve fitting software to find an equation that matched the data. We came up with this graph, where A, B, and C are constants selected from the curve fitting software. Variable A can be adjusted in order to change the effective power of the motors without regards to battery voltage. We incorporated this into our program, which uses a programmed voltage sensor to instantly adjust motor power based on the battery voltage 
resulting in a launch height of exactly 5 feet, regardless of the battery level at that instant. This was the main reason why we never missed any particles in the tunnels. The flywheels shot the particles at the same height every time. By considering these four points, we were able to drastically improve our, the consistency of our autonomous routine. What do you think? Be sure to crack your opinions in the comments section. You should also feel free to contact us with any questions, comments, or suggestions. Remember to like and share this video if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.